Hey everybody, welcome to System Test 31. So although my last three system tests have been extremely modern with the LED exceeders and then the uh, two systems with the Spectralert devices, uh, today we're going to be taking a step back about 20 years and taking a look at some good old fashioned Simplex 4903 series mechanical horns. So let's go ahead and get started. For the notification appliances, we have a Simplex 4903-9219 electromechanical horn strobe. The horn is uh, being coded by the panel to continuous. And ever since it got dropped by the code books, I've kind of given up on the whole audible silence thing. So the strobe is wired directly into the horn on this model. And then over on the right side of the board, we have a Simplex 4901-9805 remote horn. And just like the 9219, this is also in continuous. For the pole stations, we have a single action Simplex 2099-9754 and in addition to a dual action 2099-9761 which was formerly addressable, that's why it'll come up as a MapNet 2 model number. However, the uh, original addressable module behind this pole station got ruined by water damage so uh, I didn't feel too bad about chopping that off and just converting this to a conventional pole station. Now we're going to go ahead and start things off by activating the single action T-bar. Since pulling both of these stations will get a little repetitive, I'm going to go ahead and do a key test on this second unit right here. We can go ahead and reset this guy. Followed by resetting the panel. And lastly, we'll reset the DMP system. So that's it for the system test content for today, and with the extra time at the end here, I wanted to talk real quick about uh, this horn you see on the screen, the 4901-9805. So you may have noticed that during the first alarm activation, when I had moved the camera away from the pole station and was filming uh, just the alarms by themselves, uh, somewhere near the end of that uh, video scene, you probably heard the horns rapidly shift their pitch and they kind of sounded weird for a moment. Um, that was because this unit actually dropped out for a couple seconds. Um, it wasn't a problem with the panel. The neck was still giving power. Nothing showed up on the screen because I was standing there watching it. Um, and I kind of expected that to happen because I've been, you know, testing this horn 
um, and then also I had a like an individual test video of it that's coming and um, it's kind of surprising that it sounded for as long as it did throughout that test because this horn has uh, kind of given itself a track record of dropping out um, for several seconds which when it's sounding with other horns doesn't make that big of a difference but then when it's the only horn sounding and you're recording it and it suddenly drops out it's kind of like oh hello um, so that was what was just up with that I think the reason why is because uh, this horn these Faraday mechanisms um, they don't use mechanical contacts they use that infrared light um, and a circuit board in order to generate the pulses going to the electromagnet and so probably for some reason uh, it just hung up for a second and I'm not sure if it eventually registered that the electromagnet had fired and then to fire it again or maybe um, uh, it might be smart enough to recognize that it had power but was no longer sounding so it just restarted itself or whatever it does but it has uh, cut out for several seconds and restarted several times as I've been testing the system before filming this video. So that's just what's up with that. So thank you guys for watching and have a great day.